We talked about some strategies for helping your bigger customers get what they want while still executing the techniques and principles that we've, that we've been learning about in the specialization so far. But there are certain situations where you're selling solutions to big customers and a certain amount of variation is inevitable, particularly if your product is deeply embedded in the way they do business, there are gonna be differences in the way that they use it and need it configured that you're gonna to have to accommodate. The right answer to that may depend a little bit on the type of business that you are. And, and we're gonna talk about ways that you can think about the type of business you are and marry that with some design focus that may help you accommodate better that customer to customer variation. You may remember these three business types if you did the optional IT module in course one. The idea is that infrastructure businesses are scale driven. So their success, their profitability is driven by the ability to do the same thing for many different customers over and over and over again. And then we have scope driven companies, their success and profitability is driven by an economy of scope. So their ability to bring a bunch of relatively disparate things together and put them in front of a single buyer in a way that is compelling to that buyer or user. And then a product-driven company is a company that creates something unique and proprietary that connects with demand in a new way and or extracts some kind of premium. Now, companies that make packaged software, it's sort of obvious and, and, and easy to think about them as, well, they're, they make software products, they're product-driven, but that's not always the case. An infrastructure business in the software space is, for instance, AWS, the Amazon Web Services, or Heroku, these companies supply ready-to-use automated cloud infrastructure for running applications. So their profitability is principally driven by their ability to just keep spinning up these machines, charging customers for them, and doing it all in a relatively standard way. A scope-driven business in the software IT space might be a company that does a whole bunch of things for the small business, web hosting, domain registration, email, things like that. So that is less about their ability to do things exactly the same way, but more about their ability to put the right things together for a given type of buyer or user and create a good experience for them. And then finally, you have product-driven businesses. These are businesses that create a unique piece of software that is exciting and novel. So a game, for example, is a clearly a, a product-driven company product. All right, so let's talk about how this relates to certain design decisions. Well, you have your core application that you're building. And if you are an infrastructure business, principally, then that's important as a way to create access to the store of value. So whatever it is you do that's important. So if that's spinning up servers or, for instance, another good example of what I would call an infrastructure-driven software company is Twilio, which provides an interface and set of applications for connecting with the phone system. So for instance, when you get a two-factor authentication message to a text message to log into your Gmail, let's say, well, they might use Twilio to send that message to you. And so Twilio's job is to make it really easy for lots of different companies to use that same infrastructure through their API and get access to that core store of value, which is a standardized way to do this job of sending people text messages or creating real-time communication, things like that. For Scope, it's primarily your, your product is about, your, your software execution rather, is about enhancing the buyer or user experience, whatever that means in your context. And if you're product driven, it's primarily about user-centric experimentation, innovation, solving the jobs that the customer has in fundamentally new ways. Okay, so what does that mean for APIs and, and services that you layer on top of the core application? So these are things that users can use to kind of customize their access and the way that they're using this product. Well, an API or service layer is very important in an infrastructure-driven business. So if you look at a company like Twilio, well, they probably ascribe a lot of importance to making their API usable and visible and working with their developer community to make it really, really useful. If you're a scope-driven company, well, you're more likely to be the consumer and the user of a bunch of other people's APIs. So perhaps that isn't quite as important to you. And 
If you're a product company, that'll vary a lot. I, I don't really have a sort of standard answer on that one. And you have your front end, your user interface. Well, if you're an infrastructure-driven company and you primarily provide access to a core service through an API or something, well, you know, you may have this or it may not even really exist. Or if it does, it may be very simple and, and for basic kind of administration stuff. If you're in a scope business, well, this probably is really important. And it has a lot to do with your success with the user. And if your product, it's, it's probably highly important. So this is not a one size fits all thing, but if you are grappling with your ability to provide customized uses, applications, modalities of your product with big customers, and you're finding that they vary a lot, you might wanna ask yourself, which one of these types of businesses are we most principally? And what does that mean for what we're seeing um, as, the, as the needs of the customer and, and where we're focusing on, all, you know, there's a, thousands of things we could potentially do with the product. Are we focusing in the right places? You may find that is a useful discussion to have with your team.